We'll bring this meeting of the Nicolau City Council to order. Welcome the guests, the administration, and the rest of council. And with that, roll call, please. All right. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Present. Councilman Bond? Here. Councilman Chammy? Here. Councilwoman Wright? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Here. All present. And with that, we'll have an invocation by Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings. Thank you for the beautiful weather. We pray that you be in this meeting and let thy perfect will be done. Please keep thy mighty hand upon our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, I need an action on the minutes of 10 7, the regular meeting. The motion. Okay. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chandler? Yes. Accepted, seven, zero. All right, I need a motion for the work session minutes of October the 10th. Second. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. And Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Accepted, seven, zero. And another motion for the work session of October the 15th. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chief? Yes. Accepted seven is uh, Does anybody have any communications? None today. Okay. And with that, we'll go to the city manager's report, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Good evening, everyone. Uh, there is no regular departmental reports as we will put those out on Monday, November 18th. Under informational items, under discussion topics, first one is a collective bargaining unit negotiations. We did complete negotiations this uh, last week within the boundaries that we had discussed um, here with council. So legislation should be introed for the November 18th um, council meeting. Uh, comprehensive use, uh, land use plan, that will be something that's coming up. I'll begin with Brian. I know, Mayor, you'd, you guys had mentioned about you know coming up here in November, December to start working on the comprehensive use plan, but I'm sure we'll be getting geared up for that. The 2025 CIP and operating budget timeline, intro for that will be 1118 um, and then action on December 2nd so that way 15 days later we'll be able to get this over to the auditors and start January 1 with a with a brand new budget um, any questions on the budget I thought it had to be there sooner than that would be like the 17th 18th so, so it, it gets approved on December 2nd and December 17th uh, Ms. Harris will take it over to the county uh, county auditors. Okay. There'll be a legal. To, they'll get it back to us before January one. Well, once well be impressive. Once it's improved, approved by council and effective, um, it's it's not an. I don't. They'll give us a revised certificate later in the year when okay. I give them our ending balances. But it's already technically approved, and we can operate January one. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And it will be out in a legal ad here soon with the um, the small one like you guys approved. That will be out for inspection at the appropriate places. Mr. Bond. <clears throat> so after our last <clears throat> meeting on the budget, I know we had uh, approved a increase in the water rates for next year. And what I'd like to kick around with you guys is <clears throat> if we didn't I just in light of everything in the that we're doing in the budget with the pay increases the um, water rates the uh, 
new hiring and different things like that. <clears throat> and, and the need to shore up some of these uh, fund balances that, that are getting low, the water in particular, which is why we voted to increase the, the water rates. What I'd like to propose is that we hold those water rates, we hold off on hiring the zone and the other code enforcement person and hold off on purchasing that vehicle, which that then, what, what raising the water rates did is that added about 60 or $70,000 to that, that water budget to bring that up hopefully to about a $200,000 uh, balance at the end of the year is what our goal was to get that kind of shirt up a little bit. But by not spending that on the general side with the, the hiring of that individual and the vehicle purchase, that should free up about that fifty sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on that side of the budget that we could then put an influx of that money into the water if we needed to, to shore that up. We could hold the water rates for at least a year. We could even visit it mid-year if we needed to. Um, and that way, we're, I'm just a little concerned about some of the, the raises in the, in the wages that we're gonna see to the budget, as well as then raising the rates on our, on our taxpayers if we could avoid it. Um, so, in a nutshell, that's what I'm proposing that we would do. Go ahead, Kathy. I 100% agree with Ben. I was feeling really bad about everybody getting a raise and our citizens getting a raise on their water bill. It just wasn't sitting well with me. So I love Ben's idea. I think that's a really good way to go. I'm all for it. And so maybe, yeah, go ahead. The water fund, I mean, I like your idea. But the water fund is a uh, enterprise fund, so it is supposed to be self-sufficient, and that's why we had raised the the rates in the past for water and sewer to generate money in those funds. And I'm I don't know. Maybe Mr. Kiko or Mr. Jeffries can have an input here. I'm not sure we can transfer money from the general fund to a <coughs> enterprise fund like that, although we do for the pool, and it's supposed mm -hmm. to be an enterprise fund too. So maybe I just answered my own question. <laughs> uh, you can, uh, there's two different methods. It, it's, not the, it's not the way you wanna do it, yeah. but it is that backup way if some, you have an emergency or you need something right away. Uh, the two methods are to transfer from the general fund is a loan to be paid it back by the water department or it's a grant from the general fund to the water fund for a one-time uh, um, payment to the water fund. Those are the two ways to do it. Now, the water fund cannot put into the general fund at any time, under no circumstances. So let's say the general fund helped the water department out in 2025. In 2026, the general fund needed help, but the water plant was super flush with funds. They couldn't help the general fund out. Anyone else? Do we need a motion on that, or? Mr. You currently have a motion from last meeting to raise the rate 7%. So that is where we stand right now is our directive for um, rates as we speak. So we could cancel can, that I, motion? I can make a motion to reconsider that motion. We then vote on that to reconsider that motion to raise the water rates. Yeah. And that, if that did not pass, then that kills that motion. And then I can make another motion to do what I just said, if that's acceptable to you guys. Okay, so Chris, have we got a motion here that you understand? So the motion you made is just to reconsider the water rate increase? Sure, yes, I'll make that motion. No second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further, go ahead, Bill. Would that be a re, to rescind that motion? I didn't hear those or words re, in your motion. Or re, reconsider it. Okay. I mean, I guess we could rescind it. 
They're very that similar. Would probably work better. You I think it would be clearer way. from my perspective. Okay. I make a motion to rescind. I think it's reconsidered. Is it? Is it a reconsider? Right That's what I was. I think it was a reconsider. So. Okay. So a motion to reconsider the water rate increase. Councilman Lindsay. Oh, you second that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? No. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Jamie? Yes. And Councilwoman Wright? Yes. So five to two accepted. Now, oh, Mr. Bond, you want another motion? No, that would pass. <laughs> well, that, yeah, that, that would have done away with the other one, so. Um, yeah, so my new motion, I'd like to move that we hold the water rates. We don't hire the extra zoning enforcement person or buy or purchase the vehicle for that department this year. And um, and that I guess we move the money. Can I say one more thing real quick? Go ahead. Let me just ask Howie a question or, or Mrs. Harris a question real quick before I make that motion. But would it be better to, to put the money transfer in this motion or would it be better to wait and see how? It would be better to uh, uh, re- uh, to look at this again in April, once we close the first quarter books, okay. and to revisit the water fund, fund balance, and basically revisit everything that you're talking about. Okay. So we'll just, we'll come back and look at it and say, hey, here, here's where we are, fund balance is still good. We don't want to make that transfer at this time. We want to do it if, if it's needed. Right. Because it would be a slow movement of money, even if we increase the water rates. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a big dump in there. It would just be a slow incremental. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's my motion. Motion that we, in the budget, we don't hire the uh, the zoning enforcement person, the extra one, or purchase that vehicle on that side to hopefully save that money, and that we hold the water rates. Second. Second. I think Shammy does. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Didn't hear so it. The motion is to hold the water rate and do not hire the extra zoning <coughs> enforcement person or purchase the vehicle this year. Yep, on that. Um, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? No. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chan? Yes. Accepted five to two. So the um, ordinance will come intro as, I mean, that it was pretty much 99.5% complete. That'll be the last piece, and then we'll have legislation before you. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on from the budget? I'm just taking it out before we finish. Yeah. Right. Yep. Let's see. Get back to my spot here. Reserves at Honey Creek and Monroe Meadows general update. Um, so the update on reserves at Honey Creek, everything is paved. They did get the county building regulations to start looking at their model permits uh, before they get their final plat recorded. I'm still working with the company who owns the IGA properties and everything uh, to, there's some easement issues that need to get cleared up, but it's not anything major. They have easements on stuff that we should just have easements on, not both of us. This doesn't make sense. So we're just trying to get it cleared up, but that's not stopping them from, from um, building the model. Also, Monroe Meadows is the same. They've approached the county building official to start getting their plans reviewed and to start getting some of their models put up soon. As far as uh, coming up legislation, we are still working on the Monroe, Monroe Meadows TIF legislation. So again, when that ordinance comes uh, in front of you in the beginning, we'll be tabling it because we're still looking at additional information for that TIF legislation. Under the new community authority, there is a summary that is attached again in your uh, packet. Under Ohio Revised Code, Chapter 349, there is some information on where you could do the new community authority um, to 
add approximately four to five mils on top of the tiffing for different community projects. I know that uh, that was brought uh, to your attention in a previous meeting. I don't know how far the discussion went, but there will be TIFs on both Monroe Meadows and Honey Creek uh, to bring in funds. So I didn't know what the thoughts were on council to set up the uh, new NCA. And one is we do have some information that Monroe Meadows is, you know, they're really not interested in the NCA, which then um, I believe, well, out of the two developments, one was, one was not. Well, if one is not and one is, that's an unfair um, for one developer to be selling homes with an additional property tax on it. So I wanted to get council's feeling on if you still wanted to move forward with the NCA. Outside of an NCA, their job can also be to issue bonds as a public entity, not you know anybody else. But there is another way to do that if an NCA is not formed for any reason. We can still use the port authority where all the bonds will be issued through the port authority. Obviously, they'll get a small fee to do that. But when you're completely hands off for issuing bonds, I, you know, we're, we're kind of a small community. And I think that just having us trying to work through legal to issue bonds, you know, not saying it could get sticky, but it can be a process. But the port authority is it's common to them, I believe. Go ahead, and go. Is there any chance that both of them would go with the, uh, what's it called? The TIF or the NCA? The, the N NC, whatever you call NCA. Or uh, new Community Authority? Yeah. Is there a chance that the one that doesn't want to do it will reconsider or not? Because in my opinion, if one of them is doing it, then we should not do it. They both need to. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it at this point. Um, it is common to have both, but then it is common to have one and or the other. Yeah, but the one that doesn't have it, I think, would have an advantage on selling homes. Y yes. If they started comparing, and it could hurt the other one that does have it. So. Yeah, then the NCA would be about a four to five mil range, about $440 a year that yeah. one property developer would have and then one wouldn't. I would think if both of them are going to do it, then we need not to move forward on it, is my opinion. And go ahead, Kathy. My opinion on it is it takes a lot of the power away from us. I uh, personally don't like it because it puts the, the payment for our improvements onto their backs, which we're looking forward to their income already from their salaries. So, And that will amount to a whole lot more money than the new community authority would anyways because you're not talking about that much money but you're talking about a very long going thing and it also needs a vote by the people to get rid of it so I don't think that's a really good idea either so I'm just kind of against it period go ahead um, I'm actually also not for it at all um, I'm a small government kind of gal, and it just seems like it's more government and stuff being put on people, and I just feel like it's not fair. Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Go ahead, Bill. So do you want a motion to... I think it would probably be wise to do that so I know have clear direction in order to uh, tell our uh, land attorney in, what, in Columbus what... Uh, council's desires are and in that way he can go ahead and start telling he's doing a lot of the negotiations while we're talking here with these developers so that'll help be helpful do you and think I oh. we, one second do you think it would uh, draw new homeowners away if one one has it and one doesn't so there's always a possibility there's always a possibility if I'm gonna pick one or the other right. and one's got an extra four hundred fifty dollars on it and one doesn't yeah I'm not gonna I mean some people may not care or even know what their property taxes are, but some do. Right. Thank you. Go ahead, Bill. So I'll move that we do not move forward with the new community authority, a.k.a. NCA, and just basically drop it. So your motion is to not move forward with the NCA or the new com new community authority. Correct. Okay. 
Second. I got it. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheehan? Yes. Accepted seven to zero. <clears throat> All right, moving on to police levy renewal discussion. Um, the police levy expires June 30th of 2025. So okay. we will start moving forward. Um, we just got information on that. So we will start moving forward with uh, getting all the proper resolutions, ordinances, and everything drafted um, to get a five-year renewal uh, on the May's ballot, I think it would be. I don't know if they've scheduled it yet. If they haven't scheduled, we looked on the state site, as I say, April, and I didn't see it either. Oh. So as soon as they schedule whenever the, that <coughs> normal election is in March, May, or whenever it is, we'll put it on as whatever one's appropriate. So you'll see legislation coming before you sometime soon. And that's the renewal, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Yes. Uh, that's a renewal of the 5%, correct? Correct. Half percent. All right. Half a percent, I'm sorry. I knew it was a five. <laughs> it's been a long day. Any other questions on that before I move on? Um, on the bond and ballot information for city council, I'm planning to... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, we had talked about that sixth officer. Mm -hmm. And will that be on the new one for sure, or is that going to be a not going to go thing? I spoke with the sergeant. They are working on the sixth deputy. I think there's some in training right now. Mm -hmm. they're, all also, they're also looking at uh, the leasing of the vehicle for the sixth deputy. So I think they're in training. They're, there's, there's a bunch of moving parts right now, mm -hmm. and also with the new sheriff coming on board, uh, which I could probably skip just a little bit, the sheriff's contract and the dispatching contract because the sheriff oversees the dispatching 911 center. The current sheriff and the new have kind of agreed that they, they're they not going to step on anybody's toes. So they're going to let our current agreements just roll right into 25. I've already talked to the attorney over at the sheriff's office and said, it should, he said, we could throw something together if you'd like, but it is probably not um, desired at this time to go ahead and let everybody negotiate with the new sheriff when he comes on board. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Bill. On the sheriff's contract, did you get that in writing? I'm, I got to pull it back up, but I believe it does carry through. And if it doesn't, we'll have something like that brought. In the contract? I mean, it's in the current contract? No, I, no, I'll have to look in the current contract, but if I do not find it, I will get a hold of their attorney and have them send something over. I, I don't think it's in there, but uh, it could be. Yeah, if, if, if they're going to do that, it needs to be in writing for, for our protection. And I believe they're doing this with Moorfield, Bethel. So every, it won't be just one. If, if whatever it is, I'm sure they're going to do this for all. But I'll, I'll double check into that. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, bond and ballot information for city council. I'm about to play a little catch up with this one. I'm not... Um, sure what the bond and ballot information was coming for unless that was for the pool yeah, it was. is that what it was for okay i will start digging into all that information on resolutions and ordinances time frames um you know the potential cost and just get you know what that might curtail to get something like that put on so i'll have to do some digging In an upcoming legislation, uh, we have the reserves of Honey Creek TIF uh, legislation that will be coming up uh, soon. Miami, Miami Valley Lighting, I am reviewing that currently. Um, so I will have legislation for introduction at the November 18th meeting for our Miami Valley Lighting. It's typically every five years we renew for that, and they're the ones that do our street lights, uh, decorative light poles, and stuff like that. Health insurance renewals are in. They're being reviewed currently. Um, it is. A, it came back, I think, unless you want to elaborate a little bit on it. Um, it came back pretty much the same as last year where they started out at a 16 17% increase, went back for rebid, renegotiation, and it's down to 8%. That's what we um, <coughs> had last year, and I think it was nine years before. So we're choosing to stay with the health insurance that we have. Um, everybody seems happy, and we don't have to go out and make changes, and we have the 8% in the budget. So once we sure up um, those numbers and everything's good, we'll have legislation in front of council um, for the 
citywide health insurance. Uh, of course, you'll have legislation coming for the CIP and operating budget, uh, the business continuation plan, and I will look into the sheriff contract, contract and dispatching agreement. The collective bargaining unit contract will have legislation. It'll be a pretty bu uh, busy meeting on the 18th. And then the subdividers agreement for residential developments will still be coming. And any additional topics that council or would like to discuss? Go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. Only question I have for you, is there anything you need from us at this point while you're kind of pulling double duty? Not right now. Um, it just It's a, just a lot of end of year stuff right now. So um, I'm getting a lot of help from the superintendents and especially April. Um, she's got a lot of previous history with uh, um, some of Randy's schedule. And so we've brought a lot of that over with a lot of calendar reminders. So, um, you know, with her doing the packets, getting all this stuff, it's been extremely helpful. So good so far. Okay. Well, just let us know. No, thank you. Yes. And that is all I have on the... I, I would just like to, to tell Howie that uh, I think council will appreciate you stepping up, not turning down the the uh, appointment to interim city manager and get used to the seat. You might be there a while. Do I have another choice? No, well, no not really. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could always quit, but I wouldn't want to see you do that. No, I appreciate not it. Too close to retirement for that. Yeah. Um, if there's nothing else, that is my city manager's report for tonight. All we had left was uh, our lawyer. If you didn't take me, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if no, nothing else, I, uh, I can see we can go to committee reports. I don't think there are any committee reports at this time. If we get down to comments from members of the public. I would just like to thank the council for voting to put the work sessions on, on YouTube. That is so helpful. And I was too tired to come to that meeting that night, so I just watched it. And that way I can go back and hear what was actually said and watch it for a while and take a break and then go back and it's really great to hear more about the budget and learn more about the budget and things like that. So really appreciate you doing that. So, and I'd like to invite, remind everybody to go out and vote yes for the chickens. And uh, <laughs> I already voted. <laughs> and also just to go out and vote. Because Absolutely. even if you haven't decided on a president, there's still city issues you can vote on and state issues, so just go and vote. Oh, and our church is selling caramels. Oh, again. Yeah, so if anyone needs caramels, always. Get a hold of me, or you can go to church. She's in the office from nine to one, I think. And I think they're twelve dollars for a pound and six dollars for half a pound. And we're going to have pecans too, but they're more. I think it's sixteen and eight. So they'll be ready soon. Well, some are already ready, just not the pecans. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Go ahead, yeah, Steve. I got it. Steve. <coughs> Steve Fields, your city planning board president. I have a question I'd like to direct to Mr. Kiko, if I may. You know if a mylar came back on the preserves I think we yet? We have the redo it. Yeah, we have the mylar on we have the mylar on mylar on Monroe Meadows. I will check no, the mylar is what part of the um, yeah, easements. Of, yeah, we're waiting for the mylar just to get this corrected. That's this okay. easement, I still easement issue. To sign it and I included, yep. So I didn't know. Yep. Okay. Basically, on here, if you have, when you get down to your uh, ordinance 20, 24, 60 on here, if you got some questions, uh, we sent you that. That's the uh, ordinance for the solar energy regulations. It's a really good thing. I hope you consider it. Thank you. My name is Deborah Mincy. It's N E N S I. And I'm at 1205 Wendell Avenue. So, 
so I want to apologize. I've not been to a few meetings, so some of this stuff is kind of old. Um, and this is directed to any council member. Some doesn't need answers, some I would like to know. In September, when you came on board, we were asked to leave and not do the interview. And I know that when Mr. Lindsay was elected and stuff, we got to meet people, we got to vote on it. So I was kind of surprised that we weren't allowed to be in that meeting. Um, the next one is oh, the pool. Um, I'd like us to see us do it. I think, as everyone says, there's not enough things for the kids to do. And you go down there and you see kids down there. Um, if we have to build a new one, let's build a new one. It doesn't have to be real expensive. I know that council members have said about putting in a splash pad. Splash pad. So if we have to do that, but if we don't, that's okay too. And if we need to move it, let's do it because I know that area is not good. Uh, in some of the meetings that we had on YouTube, when people are talking, there were some people that were moving papers around. I know they weren't done on purpose, but you couldn't hear during those times. It might have been the budget ones, I'm not 100% sure, but just keep that in mind. <laughs> That's what said. Um, I don't know if I want to say this one. Um, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Go for it. So, someone, a council member said something about the old garage or something, and did it really need to be torn down and stuff? I think we need to take the staff's expertise into consideration, and unless you're a builder or something, I would not know. <laughs> so, that's just one thing I wanted to say. Um, also, they mentioned in one of the meetings, um, I don't know what it's called. When you get cremated, then you have the wall or something you guys are working on? The columborium. Yeah, so my family's gonna purchase one when it's available. And Vice Mayor Eagleston, thank you for staying. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. I guess that's everybody in the audience. With that, has anybody up here got anything that they want to bring forth before we go to the ordinance and resolution? Um, I just noticed there's no new business on there. That's okay. All right, go ahead, Chris. Okay, so um, the ordinances, there's four introductions and one action. So ordinance 2024-52, introduction 916, public hearing and action tonight. Creating the Monroe Meadows Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of these parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of these service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center, and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. So moved. Do we need a we motion to the, table the, the, the table on that? Table on it. Just move the table, please. Okay. So uh, I'd have to just move, the move the table. Right? Move the table. Second. Any other comments on that? Do we accept the vote on it? Yeah. Uh, Vice Mayor Eagleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Groh? Yeah. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Accepted 7 to 0. Okay, Ordinance 2024-57, Introduction 1028-24, Public Hearing and Action on 11-12-24. An ordinance authorizing the City Manager or the Director of Public Service Assistant City Manager to enter into an agreement for the City's Water Main and Service Line replace Replacement Project. So moved. This one's just a read only. Yeah, that read only? for November 12th. Oh. It's just a read only. Um, ordinance 2024-58, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 11-18-24. 
an ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock salt. Ordinance 2024-59, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 11-18-24. An ordinance amending chapter 276 of the codified ordinances of the New Carlisle for the purpose of establishing parks and recreation and public service commissions and to provide guidelines for commissions. Ordinance 2024-60, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 11-18-24, an ordinance amending the City of New Carlisle zoning code to add solar energy regulations. Anybody have anything else? If not, I need a motion to go into executive session. Sure, who was the first? To discuss the uh, employment of a public employee. Do you want me to say all that or do you have it, Chris? Can you say it for me, please? I will. I move to go into executive session and discuss the employment of a public employee for the purpose of preparing for, conducting, or reviewing collective bargaining strategy. Um, Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Mayor, I move to go back into regular session. Second. I have a motion and a second. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheehan? Yes. Accepted 7 to 0. Okay, back in regular session. You have a motion to make, Mr. Lindsay? I'm trying to think what it was now. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we direct the law director to reply to Mr. Bridges' attorney. That we will only go with the offer that we originally sent and we expect a reply within 48 hours of their receiving it. Anything else? There's something I forgot? Second. I don't make the only thing I would say. You make me repeat that. <laughs> you should have Howie ask me to do that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a technical. Right. We're directing the <clears throat> interim city manager to direct the lawyer to do it. To so take out the lawyer and put in the man interim manager. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on your toes. I was looking at him when I was talking. You wasn't over there. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yep. <laughs> well, so your motion is to direct the interim city manager to direct the law director to reply to Mr. Bridges' attorney with only going to, with the original offer sent with a reply within 48 hours of receipt. Yes. Okay. Uh, Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Except at six to one. Anything else? No. Move to adjourn. Second. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes.